Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice algebra problem, which is x to the power of a half minus x to the power of 1 over 3. This is equal to 4. So, what are the values of x? Now, let's provide a solution from here. So, this implies that from here, we have x to the power of a half subtract x to the power of 1 over 3. This is equal to 4. So the first step to do here, we can let x to be equal to k to the power of 6. Now let's substitute x with k to the power of 6, so that we have k to the power of 6, raised to the power of a half, then subtract k to the power of 6, raised to the power of 1 over 3. This is equal to 4. Now, we have that k to the power of 6 raised to the power of a half, and k to the power of 6 to the power of 1 over 3. This is in the form of a to the power of n raised to the power of m, which we can express as a to the power of n multiplied by m. Now, applying this exponent property, then we have k to the power of 6 multiplied by a half, then minus k to the power of 6 multiplied by 1 over 3. This is equal to 4. So let's simplify here. 6 divided by 2, this is 3. So this is k to the power of 3 minus k to the power of 6. So let's simplify here. 6 divided by 3, this is 2. So we have k to the power of 2. This is equal to 4. Now, the next step is that we can express 4. We can express 4. This is the same thing as 8, subtract 4. If you say 8 minus 4 is the same thing as 4. The next step is to take 8 minus 4 on the left hand side, so that we have k to the power of 3, subtract k to the power of 2, subtract 8, then plus 4, this is equal to 0. Now, we have k to the power of 3, subtract k to the power of 2, subtract 8, which is 2 to the power of 3, then plus 4, which is 2 to the power of 2, this is equal to 0. Now, here we have k to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 3, so this means we have k to the power of 3, minus 2 to the power of 3, then subtract k to the power of 2, plus 2 to the power of 2, this is equal to 0. So in this case, we have k to the power of 3, subtract 2 to the power of 3, minus, we can express k to the power of 2, plus 2 to the power of 2 as k to the power of 2, minus 2 to the power of 2, cross the parentheses, this is equal to 0. Now here we have got two parts here. We have k to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 3. This is the difference of 2 perfect this, this is the difference of two cubes expressed as a to the power of three minus b to the power of three and the second part here this is the difference of two perfect squares expressed as a squared minus b squared so we have that a to the power of three minus b to the power of three this can be expressed as a minus b into the parentheses this is a to the power of two plus a times b then plus b to the power of 2. So let's apply this identity so that now k to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 3. This can be expressed as k subtract 2. Then here we have k squared plus 2k then plus 2 squared which is 4. Let's call this equation 1 here. And then we have k to the power of 2 subtract 2 to the power of 2 this can be expressed as k plus 2 then multiplied by k minus 2 let's call this equation 2 now let's combine equation 1 and 2 from here so that we have k subtract 2 then k squared plus 2k plus 4 cross the parentheses, then 
subtract here we have k plus 2 multiplied by k minus 2 and this is equal to 0 now if we check here we have that k minus 2 is common here so we can factor out k minus 2 into the parentheses this is k squared plus 2k plus 4 subtract here we have k plus 2 this is equal to 0 now here we have k minus 2 then here we have k squared plus now this is 2k plus 4 let's open the parentheses here minus times k this is minus k minus times plus 2 this is minus 2 this is equal to 0 so this is k minus 2 this is k squared now plus 2k minus k this is plus k then we have 4 minus 2 this is plus 2 cross the parentheses this is equal to 0 now this implies we have got two parts here we have that k minus 2 this is equal to 0 and we have k squared plus k plus 2 this is equal to 0 now from the first part here we have that k1 is equal to 2 k1 is equal to 2 now from the second part here we have that this is a quadratic equation where we have a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 and c is equal to 2 now we can solve for k2 comma k3 by applying the quadratic formula here which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac everything here divided by 2 times a now let's substitute the values of a b and c in this formula here so that we have minus 1 plus or minus we have the square root of 1 squared minus 4 multiplied by 1 times c which is equal to 2 then everything here divided by 2 multiplied by 1 and this is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared this is 1 minus 4 times 2 which is 8 everything here divided by 2 now the next step from here we have this as minus 1 plus or minus we have the square root of 1 minus 8 this is minus 7 everything here divided by 2 we can express the square root of minus 7 this is the same thing as the square root of 7 multiplied by minus 1 everything here divided by 2 we have that the square root of minus 1 this is the same thing as i and therefore we have here minus 1 plus or minus we have the square root of 7 i divided by 2 now you find that these are two complex solutions these are two complex solutions which implies that k2 and k3 this cannot give us a real solution so there is no real solution here from this k2 and k3 remember these are two complex solutions so we only have k1 which is equal to 2 this is the one that can give us a real solution so let's let's focus on k1 which is equal to 2 now if you recall if you recall we are saying that let x be equal to k to the power of 6 so we can solve for the value of x here by substituting the value of k so that x is equal to 2 to the power of 6 and 2 to the power of 6 this is equal to 64 so this is the value of x now the next step is to verify that this value of x here satisfies the equation now if you recall we end that if you recall we end that x 
to the power of half subtract x to the power of 1 over 3. This is supposed to give us a value of 4. Now, let's substitute x equal to 64. So we have 64 raised to the power of a half minus 64 raised to the power of 1 over 3. This is supposed to give us a value of 4. Now, 64 is to the power of a half. This means this is the square root of 64. Then subtract 64 to the power of a third. This is the, the cube root of 64. This should give us a value of 4. So we have that the square root of 64, this is 8, minus the cube root of 64. This is the same thing as 4. This is supposed to give us a value of 4. Now, 8 minus 4, this is 4, which is equal to 4. And this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side. And this affirms that the value of x here, which is 64, satisfies the equation. So can you follow the steps? Like this video and country subscribe please like this video and country subscribe see you in the next video bye bye for now